In this tutorial, in Adobe Premiere Elements 2018, we're going to look at how to edit a picture-in-picture -picture object that you created using one of the presets that you get in your effects area. We have a tutorial on how to create that, so we're going to be very quick at uh, putting one on the screen here. Uh, I'm going to take this picture of the scal, drop it on track number two, and as we might expect, it will simply override what we have in track one. We want it to make it a picture in picture, so we're going to go to our effects room. We'll pick an effect. Let's do one where it slides in from the bottom to the lower right, drag and drop it. And uh, as in our other tutorial, we show you how to do that. Then we'll go ahead and we'll play this segment of our video, and it will come in from the lower right and stop there. So let's assume that this is what you have and you'd like to change it a little bit. You have to be careful because there's some things you can change that make it look good and something that you change that make it look horrible. Let me show you a couple of examples. If you don't have any effects uh, in your screen to the right, simply click on the effect editor and the panel on the right and it will pop up this screen. What we want to do is let's say we only have 25% or 40% for the size of our picture-in-picture -picture object. What if we want a, a different size? Well, I'll highlight it, and then I'll click in Motion. Now, Motion is a bit misleading because there's also a feature in here called Scale. So I'll take the scale, and I'll make the scale instead of 40%, let's make it uh, 75%. Now I can use a slider or I can drag across the numbers with a mouse with a double headed arrow or I can simply just click on the numbers and type in 75 and press the enter key and now it's 75%. Now if I go ahead and play this I've got the same motion uh, but I have it larger. But now I have another problem. Some of it's off the screen so I want to change the location. This is where I'll have a problem. I'll go back to my setting, click on motion, and now let's change position. I can change position several ways. I can change the X, Y coordinates. You see my double headed arrow by dragging over here to the left. And then I can drag this other number to the left. Or I can actually click on the object in the preview window and I can move it up. Now you notice when I do I not only have the bounding box around the object, I have this additional area here. Now this is the motion track because when I use this particular kind of picture-in-picture -picture preset, it created something called keyframes. A keyframe basically controls certain characteristics of an object at any moment in time. That's how you get motion. So what I've done is I've added my own keyframe control simply by moving the object as well as the ones that were there before. But let's see what this does. We're going to go back, move our uh, current time indicator before it starts and click play. It will come in and it will start where it did and then all of a sudden it will begin to move to my final location. But it doesn't do so smoothly. Why? because it's trying to obey all the controls of the preset and then add the things that I did. And the results are not often what you want. So you have to be careful to say what is the preset controlling and what can I add without making it look worse. Uh, if you want to reset all of this to normal, you can simply delete the image and start over, but there's an easier way. Highlight it and then you can click on the toggle animation on motion, which is what we changed. This will say this will delete existing keyframes. That's exactly what I wanted to do because the preset created keyframes. By moving it with the mouse, I created more, so I'll take them all away. And if I want to start fresh even more, I'll click on the reset button and that will change the size. So now I can go back and do my effects. Let's take the same one and drop it on and now I'm beginning again, where it comes in, it brings it up onto the screen, it locks it in at this location. 
So I, I know that with this preset, since it does not give me a scale value that changes, I can change the scale. But it does have a position value that changes. So if I change the position, I might have some problems. Let's try a different effect and see how that would change the considerations we need to make when we're going to try to make adjustments. I'll go ahead and drag in the same clip here in my video. And then what we're going to do is we'll click on this again. And with it highlighted, what I want to do is go to my effects area. And this time I'll do a scale uh, to 40% to the lower right down from full screen. And so when I play this, it starts at full screen and then it shrinks down to 40% in the lower right quadrant of the screen. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we try to make some changes on this particular one. I can, let's think about motion first of all. Now we know that motion uh, changes because the center of the image starts out in the center of the screen and winds up in the lower right quadrant. If I change anything on position, it's going to cause me some problems. I also have the scale that changes. Now watch the scale numbers change as we play this. You see the numbers moving. The scale is getting smaller and smaller. This is what the keyframes do. I'm going to back up again and we'll see what happens here on the, on the motion. As I play it, go ahead and play and see the motion numbers are changing. So if I make any change on either position or scale, I'm going to interfere with the preset. It's, a, it's very hard to do and make it look good. If I click on Opacity, though, for example, I'm going to go back and click on it and play it. Click on Opacity Values. The Opacity, or the Transparency, doesn't change at all. I can change that as much as I want, and I won't have any problems during the course of the video. So the th key thing you have to ask yourself is what uh, attributes of the particular object are changing when I have used this tool and which ones aren't. Again, the easiest way to change things back is to simply go ahead and make sure you're highlighting it and then reset it using the toggle animation. That will make the keyframes go away and reset it using the reset tool. So don't be afraid to try to edit any picture in picture objects you've created using the presets from the effects room but be aware that you, there's limited things that you can do without making it look pretty bad. The best way is to learn about keyframing, and we'll have lessons coming up on that.